Hi there, welcome to Jujubee DIY. I'm Sarah, thanks so much for joining me today. Today is Christmas in July. I'm teaming up with my good friend, Jackie, over at Crafting in a Mimi's World to bring you 10 gingerbread home decor DIYs. These cuties turned out so adorable and I can't wait to show you how I made them. So let's get started. For our first DIY, we're gonna use one of these gingerbread cutouts. These were wood cutouts that the Dollar Tree sold last Christmas season. And if you're a gingerbread fanatic like myself, then you probably have some of these in your stash. If not, you can do a quick Google search and you should be able to find something similar. Um, or you can go to 24 Hour Crafts, which I will link down below. And hopefully you'll be able to find something in a similar size there. I painted this guy in the Waverly chalk paint in hazelnut. And now I'm just going around with my white paint pen and adding in those cute little frosting details. So throughout this video, whenever I use one of these little gingerbread men from the Dollar Tree, I am going to pretty much create it in the same exact way. So I'll just show you this once. And then if you see them throughout the video again, you'll know that that's pretty much how I created them. Now I have one of these wooden peppermint cutouts from 24 Hour Crafts. I gave it a coat of the Waverly chalk paint in white. And now I'm gonna go in with a pencil and I'm just going to mark out my candy line. So I'm gonna mark the middle there and then add some of those swirly kind of lines that I will eventually paint every other one red. So I just make kind of a curved line and then basically go straight across and do an opposite curve. And that sections it off nicely. And then I'll just go in with a paintbrush. I think that this might be a flat paintbrush. And I will use the Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson to fill in all of the red. So it'll be every other section will be red. Using my Cricut and stencil vinyl, I am going to cut out the word sweet shop. Using a makeup sponge and the Waverly chalk paint and the color ink, I'm going to dab the paint onto my stencil in light layers until it is as opaque as I'd like. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, of course, you know, you can use stickers, you can hand letter this, you can use a transfer method, which I will show you later on in this video. Um, there are many ways that you can add letters on to a project. Now I'm just going to add some of those finishing details onto my peppermint using a silver paint pen. And then I'm going to glue my gingerbread man right into the center there. And I thought it would be cute to finish off each end with a little bit of red and white baker's twine that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I love how this little project turned out and I think it would be perfect for a tear tray or just somewhere where you need a little extra decoration. For our second DIY, I'm gonna use one of these wood planks from the Dollar Tree. I gave it a couple coats of the Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. Then I went into my computer and I typed in the words gingerbread bakery, printed that out and cut it down. Now I'm gonna use some transfer paper here or carbon paper to transfer my words onto my plank. So I just place the shiny side down and I like to use a little bit of tape to make sure everything stays in place. And then I'm gonna go over it with a pencil to transfer those lines. So a little tip I have for you when using carbon paper is to make sure that you have one side that's taped down and you just kind of flip it up and check to make sure everything is transferred um, because it's really hard to kind of line that back up after you've taken it off completely. Then I went in with my Posca paint pen in the color black to fill in my words and now I'm going to go around the outside edge doing some dot dashes to finish it up. 
And then I decided that I also wanted to add some highlights to my words. So I'm not being necessarily particular about where I'm adding these white lines. I'm just placing them wherever I think it might need it. So it's just kind of a, a feeling thing. I'm not necessarily like thinking of a light source here. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the second part of this project. I'm using a wood round. These are small wood rounds that come from Walmart. I think it's like a six pack of them. And I drew on my classic gingerbread face that I adopted last Christmas season. I'm just using a pencil at first and then I'll go over it with my paint pen. And the face is really pretty simple. It's super cute, but it is just teardrops for the eyes that you pretty much do like the black part is half of the eye and then you section off the second half into two more parts and then in that bottom part I like to add the white layer there and then in the middle is where I like to add the color so I'm just going to use my paint pen for the white and then I'll go in with some chalk paint and a detail brush uh, for the eye color and I'll leave a link to some detail brushes that I like to use um, and have used for a couple of years they're pretty inexpensive and you can pick them up at Walmart so I'm going to take my time and show you how I create the face for each of my gingerbread men in this video just this once um, so we'll take it a little bit slower so you can see everything that I do and I will um, stop it here and there so that you can take screenshots if you need to for reference but this will be the basic face that I create for all of the gingerbread men moving forward in this video. So I use some of the crimson to do the nose and then a little bit of ballet slipper to create some little circles for the cheeks. Now I'm going to add some frosting with my white paint pen and for this guy I am just going to do one line of frosting across his head but I think for the rest of the gingerbread men in the video I do kind of the full head dripping frosting and you'll see that um, as we move forward. So just adding some little highlights to my little gingerbread man. And now I have a little glove and I am going to give that a coat of the Waverly Chuck paint in hazelnut and then add in some cute little details with my paint pen. Sometimes as my projects progress, things take a turn that I didn't expect. So when I created my little mitten, I did the little heart on it. And then I decided that the sign needed little hearts as well. So I'm just going to use my paint pen here to create some cute little hearts. So it's all kind of cohesive. And now you can see I am going to add some glue here at the bottom of my little gingerbread man head. So he looks like he's peeking up over the sign and then we'll add the little glove as well so it looks like he's waving hello to us and here is a look at how that turned out i think this one is adorable for our third diy i'm going to use one of these little house signs from the dollar tree these came out at christmas last year and I had a couple extra ones in my stash, so I thought I would use them. Now I'm gonna use a spatula to pull off the little roof line and any staples that I couldn't pull out originally with my pliers, I just used a hammer to pop that staple through a little bit and then I could grab it with my pliers. 
And we're going to use the back side of our house here uh, to cover with scrapbook paper. So I picked out some scrapbook paper and ultimately you'll see in the end that that's not the scrapbook paper that ends up being on it, but the same process applies. So add a nice healthy amount of glue to your project. I'm just using a craft glue stick here and I picked out one color for the roof and another color for the main portion of the house. And I'll just press that down with my fingers, make sure it's nice and dry before I go to cut off any extra paper. I'll use an X-Acto knife and sandpaper. So to make a nice clean edge, just finish off your edges with sandpaper to make them nice and clean. Now taking some of the We Really Chalk paint in the color Crimson, I am going to paint my little uh, chimney here. And I do make sure that I get the sides as well because those will kind of show. So probably two or three coats of paint here. And through the magic of YouTube, you can see that I have changed the colors of my house. Again, these are just scrapbook papers that I had in my stash. They came out of uh, scrapbook packs that I picked up in Michael's last Christmas season. And I can't even tell you which ones they came out of, I don't think. So to finish off my house, I added some jute twine there between the roof line and the main part of the house. And then I added my roof back on that I had painted in that crimson color. Now that black square that you saw, I had taken off of a sign. It was a tag sign that had like a Wi-Fi password um, from the Dollar Tree. And I had taken off that square. So but you can use any square or rectangle that your gingerbread man will fit onto. And then I just covered it in the same paper I used for my roof. Now going in with my paint pen, I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, snow to my chimney and then add some swirls and cute details to the roof line to make it look super gingerbready and adorable. Now we're going to embellish our house. I'm using another one of those wood peppermint cutouts from 24 Hour Crafts. This little gingerbread man came from 24 Hour Crafts as well. As you can see, I gave him some cute little paint, adding some buttons for his front there. And then I am going to glue him to the square and then I'll glue that square to our house. And then in my stash, I had the blessed words from the Dollar Tree last fall. I believe these came out um, with this. I think it was like six different sayings and blessed was one of them. So I painted it red and gave it some white polka dots. And that finishes off this project. For our fourth DIY, I'm going to use one of these cheese boards that I picked up from the Target Dollar Spot. They were $5 for the two of them. So $2.50 a piece, I thought that was a pretty good deal for the size that it is. I'm just gonna sand around the edges and then I'm going to grab a dry chip brush and add a little bit of white paint. I'm gonna knock off quite a bit of that paint. So I'm just getting a tiny amount and I'm gonna go in with the grain. So I'm gonna drag my paintbrush from side to side uh, to add the paint and that just gives it that nice weathered look. I didn't want it to be fully white But I didn't want that whole like wood color to be Prominent so I thought that this was a nice way to kind of soften that wood look This project is super easy I used some vinyl, some Oracle 651 is what I like to use. I cut it out with my Cricut using Cricut Design Space. And this saying says, Ginger, gingerbread spice and everything nice. And I just transferred that onto the board, added the little gingerbread men kind of staggered there at the top. And then I added a mini rolling pin at the bottom that I painted red and white. 
To finish it off, I added some red and white Baker's twine from the Dollar Tree, and this completes this project. I think that this is perfect for a tear tray, or you could add a hanger to the back and hang it in your kitchen. I mentioned at the beginning of my video that I was teaming up with my friend Jackie from Crafting in a Mimi's World. We actually bonded over gingerbread men at the beginning of our journeys and we have continued the tradition. She has got an amazing playlist chocked full of gingerbread DIY inspiration. I will leave her gingerbread DIY playlists down below along with her channel. If you've never checked out Jackie's channel, definitely go check her out because she is an amazing crafter and I just adore her. For DIY number five, we're going to start off with a tag sign and I just added some scrapbook paper that I had in my stash to the front of the sign exactly like I did in the last project. Now I'm going to use some hot glue to add some of this adorable heart lace that I picked up from the Dollar Tree at Valentine's Day. And I'm just going to hot glue that all along that front seam for my starting guide, I guess. <laughs> And I'll just use a little bit of hot glue to secure it to the back. And as you can see, this is actually a recycled sign from another project. So for the second layer, I am staggering my hearts so that the bottom of the top layer there falls in between the hearts on that first layer. And I'll do that two more times so that I end up with four layers of this heart lace. I thought that this heart lace kind of looked like that intricate icing that you see on those really fancy uh, gingerbread houses and I thought it would look really super cute on this project. Here's a look at the cute little gingerbread man that I created for this project. Again, the wood cutout came from 24 Hour Crafts. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just really like the products, prices, and service. So that's where I have been getting a lot of my wood stuff from lately. I somehow didn't get this recorded, but this Believe sign came from the Dollar Tree. I gave it a coat of the Waverly chalk paint in crimson and then went around all the edges with my white paint pen in a dash dot dot pattern. Now I wanted my overall sign to say Believe in Magic. So I had this little tag wood cut out from 24 Hour Crafts in my stash and I gave it a coat of white paint. Then in pencil, I went in and wrote in magic. And then once I'm happy with how the words look, I will go over it with the black paint pen. And you can definitely use stickers or vinyl in a cutting machine here. However you want to add your letters to your signs, you can definitely do that. Now going in with some red paint and a detail brush, I'm going to add in some cute little hearts here. I just didn't want this to be like black and white stark. I just kind of wanted to add in a little more festive color. So I thought adding some cute little hearts here would be a perfect addition. So even though this little tag sign had a hole in it, there is no way that the baker's twine was going to fit through it the way I wanted it to. So I just doubled up my baker's twine, hot glued it to the back, and then I'm gonna add a little bow to the front right over the hole. So it kind of looks like there's a little bow holding my tag in place. And I think that this is really cute. And you know, as I'm doing that, I think these little tags look like tea bags so that'd be really fun to create a little tea bag out of one of these little tags anyhow <laughs> getting off track here so i'm going to add my little sign my little tag there to the word believe and i'll just hot glue the baker's twine to the back of the word and then i will hot glue that whole word to my sign at an angle
So of course I needed to make a hanger for my sign. I decided to use some Baker's twine for this. So I think I've got four layers, three or four layers of Baker's twine. And I'm just gonna do a lark knot right over the top and then create a knot uh, for the hanger. And here is a look at my cute little sign hanging up. For DIY number six, we're gonna start off with a cute decorated little gingerbread man. Again, I will leave everything linked uh, down below along with the sizes. So if you're curious about what size each of the gingerbread men are, I will do that. Now for his buttons, I decided I wanted to do some of these mini little tiny <laughs> um, peppermints. So I painted those up and added them for his buttons there. And then that red and white ribbon that I used for a bow in the front is just from the Dollar Tree last Christmas. Now he needed to be a standing gingerbread man. <laughs> and so I decided to use some Jenga blocks and these are actual Jenga blocks. They're a little thicker, a little taller, and they worked perfectly. Um, and to kind of hide that you could actually see the Jenga block a little bit, I painted it black and that just makes it so that it kind of falls back in the background. You don't really notice it and it just kind of becomes part of the background. So if you're ever worried about something like poking through, paint it black because then it kind of becomes like a shadow and you don't really even see it really. Last Christmas season, I created some candies, peppermints and candy canes, gumdrops, those types of things out of polymer clay. And so I still had some in my stash and that's what I'm gonna use for this part of the project. But I will link some places that you can buy similar items uh, online. And if I ever get it together, <laughs> I might even actually have some available in my own Etsy shop. So. I'll link my Etsy shop down below as well. It doesn't have anything in it right at the moment, but if you check back um, in a few weeks, you might see some of these little candy pieces available for sale. So I'm just gonna hot glue those onto my board that I had painted white with Waverly chalk paint. And this is just a piece of scrapbook, scrapbook, scrap wood that I had in my stash. And I believe it actually once was a bunk bed if you can believe that i'm going to continue adding little pieces of candy like mini peppermint sticks and candy canes and then once i'm happy with all the candy i am going to use some white puff paint now white puff paint is so fun for gingerbread projects because it actually looks like icing and it gives off a super fun effect so I'm going to add a liberal amount to my scrap wood here. I am going to go right up to those candy pieces and then I'll even add a little bit to some of the candy pieces to make it look like dripped frosting or snow, however you wanna look at it. And I'll just continue adding it to my whole entire piece of scrap wood there. To finish off my project, I am giving my gingerbread man a little wood candy cane that of course I painted red and white to look like a candy cane. And that really finishes off and completes this project. I think this is super cute and he looks like he is ready to party in a candy wonderland. For DIY number seven, we're gonna start off with one of these mini palette signs from the Dollar Tree. I painted it white and red, and then I had this little mason jar that came out of a creative kit at 4th of July, and I painted it white and used the steel gray from Waverly for the lid. Now we're gonna add our cute little gingerbread man to the middle of our jar. So just using a little bit of hot glue, I'm gonna stick him right to the center of the mason jar. And of course, he can't be lonely, so I added some little mini wood peppermints that I painted. And you guys, I am having so much fun painting all of these little projects. It is so fun. So now I'm gonna add my little mason jar to my palette sign. And because the 
mason jars a little bowed i'm going to add a lot of hot glue here so that it secures nice and even and then i'll just press that down really well so that it flattens out i made a little bow with the baker's twine and i'm going to add that to my gingerbread man and then using that same baker's twine i am going to wrap each end of the sign uh, for a little more decoration. I think that finishes it off perfectly and I really love how this cute little sign turned out. It looks so festive and cute and is a wonderful addition to your gingerbread decor. For DIY number eight, we're gonna start off with some jumbo craft sticks. Now these aren't the big, big ones that you can get from Walmart, but they're like the next size down, but it doesn't really matter too much what you use here. So basically we're just making a sign out of the craft sticks and I'm going to use my box knife to cut these down. I just think that gives a cleaner edge and it doesn't splinter at all. So with scissors, sometimes it'll splinter. Um, and if you have one of those like scissors, the shears, that might be better. But for me, the uh, box knife works great. And then I'm just going to make sure everything's sanded down really nicely. Sometimes those edges on the craft sticks can be a little splintery and I wanted this to look nice and finished. So I'm just going to cut those down and then these two pieces are craft sticks they're the big jumbo ones that you can get at walmart but i will leave the length um, in my description box i think they're six and a quarter or six and three quarters something like that but like i said again it doesn't doesn't matter too much because it'll depend on your base as to how big you need your sign so if you use something different than me you'll need different measurements so basically, I'm going to add the smaller craft sticks to the two bigger craft sticks. And you'll see here what I'm doing. It's easier to just see it and not explain it. <laughs> but like I said, we're just making a sign here. So I wanted my sign to be a little more decorative. So I'm going to use one of these round circles from Walmart. Again, it's like a six pack, I think. They come at six of them in a package at Walmart and uh, I'm just going to cut it in half and as you can see I'm going to add it to my sign here at the top and really it's just for decoration it has no purpose other than to make it look a little more cute <laughs> so some of you guys are going to notice that <laughs> I am not getting this centered at all um, but I do fix that eventually so make sure that you uh, measure or that you're more centered than I am here if you want, or you don't have to, if you don't care, it doesn't matter. It's your project. So we'll put that part of the project aside and now we're gonna work on the main part of the stand. So I am using two of these square crates from the Dollar Tree. And basically all you need to do is paint the bottom of the crate and one side. And then I'm going to stick these two boxes together using wood glue and hot glue. Just like that, easy. Now I'm gonna create some stripes to the front of my stand. So I'm going to do that using some washi tape and I wanted to kind of hide that center seam a little bit. I didn't really want to fill it in because, you know, that takes time. And if you want to fill it in, you definitely can. But I thought if I used, um, if I did a red stripe through the middle there, that it would kind of camouflage it a little more and it would be less noticeable. So that's my idea here is to create red and white stripes and basically I'm going to create a red stripe right in the middle of that seam. And it does do a pretty good job of hiding it. Now 
For the top and bottom of my stand, I'm going to use two of the Dollar Tree wood planks. I glued them together using wood glue, and then I'm going to add one to the top and one to the bottom. And I gave those a couple of coats of the Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. Now we're going to add our sign to our stand and as you can see I painted the top part white and then the other part red. And I'm going to use that same transfer method with that same gingerbread bakery to the front of my sign. And then I'll hand letter fresh daily and five cents to the rounded part at the top. Now to embellish our stand I'm going to add one of the wood peppermints to the very middle and then I'll add a Dollar Tree gingerbread man to each side. And then I had a cute little banner um, in my stash. You can use paper or fabric to create something like this. And then I added a couple more gingerbread men to the top. And that really just finishes off this project. It is so cute and I love that it looks like a little gingerbread stand where you could buy a fresh baked gingerbread daily. For DIY number nine, we're going to start off by stringing some wood beads. So I'm going to use a large eyed needle or darning needle to add some of this red and white baker's twine to. And then I'm going to add a wood bead that I painted in the color hazelnut to that string. And then I'm going to cut off a length and I'll pull my needle off of the one string, clip both ends so they're nice and tidy, and then I'm going to string both of those ends through my needle. And then I'm going to add a small bead that I painted white a larger bead that I paint in red, and then another white bead. And these will become arms. So you're going to do this twice for arms. And then for the legs, it is exactly the same thing, except you're going to add another red and white bead to it. So there'll just be one red and one white bead longer. And then you can just clip off, you know, a length of it. You don't need them to be too long. Now we're going to add our legs to this one and a half inch wood round that I painted in hazelnut. And I'm going to make sure that that bead, the top bead there, is just hanging off the edge of my wood round. So I want it to be able to hang freely, but I don't want there to be a huge amount of Baker's twine showing. So I am making sure that the top of the white bead is just hitting at the bottom of the wood round. I really hope that makes sense. I think that you can kind of see what I'm talking about as I am putting it together here. Now I'm going to add a generous amount of hot glue to the top of my wood round. If you want to use E6000 here as well, I think that that would be a really good idea just to make sure everything is nice and secure. But for video purposes, I am just using hot glue today. Now I'm going to add one of the Dollar Tree dice on top. If you can't find the Dollar Tree dice, you could always just use a regular square here or a sphere. And that would work just fine as well. Now we're going to add our arms to the top of the dice. So we're going to do that in exactly the same way we added the legs. We want to make sure that the beads are falling off of the edge of the dice, but not too far off. And I'm just kind of playing around with placement where I think it would look cute for the arms to be. So. You can play around with that, figure out what you like best, and then just hot glue it into place. Once 
Once the arms are secure, add another generous amount of hot glue and top that off with one of those one and a half inch wood rounds. I painted one of these one and a half inch doll wood heads to look like a little gingerbread man head. And as you can see, I did the little dripping icing around its whole entire head. I thought it looked like little hair, so cute. And then just hot glue the head to the body and make sure that he is facing the way you want because of course, once that hot glue dries, you can't move the head. But look how adorable this is turning out. So for some decoration, I'm gonna add some of the little mini peppermint candies. And then I decorated his collar with a little bit of white paint pen. And I'm gonna add a bow of Baker's twine to the front. And look at just how adorable this is. Uh, I just, I have no words. He is so cute. I can't handle it. For our 10th and final DIY, we're going to use one of these bottle caps from the Dollar Tree. I gave it a full galvanized treatment and I will link that video up in my iCards if you're interested to know how I did that. And then I found this paper in my stash. I liked it because it was lined and it's a nice heavy cardstock, but you can use anything you like here. So if you want to use regular paper or cardstock, plain cardstock, you can do that. Basically, I'm just going to write down a homemade gingerbread cookie recipe. And I thought that this would be really fun to be able to pass down to my kids so that they would have something that had my handwriting on it for years to come. Now I'm gonna work on some embellishments for my little sign. I have one of these wood hearts from Valentine's Day, came from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just using my white paint pen to spice it up and make it look super cute. And then I will decorate my gingerbread man and spoon also. And then just using some hot glue, I'm going to add my decorations to my sign. So I added the heart to the paper and then the spoon I thought would look really cute on the outside, kind of laying over the top of the bottle cap with the gingerbread cookie on top of that. Now I'm going to create a hanger using some of this red and white jute twine and then I'll top it off with a cute little bow.
And here is a look at how cute this is hanging up. And this will be a perfect heirloom and hand me down for years to come. So here is a final look at all the projects from today. I had so much fun creating each and every one of these and I love them so much. And I can hardly wait for the Christmas season to be upon us so that I can decorate my kitchen in all of these fun goodies. You'll have to let me know down below in the comment section which one was your favorite. And if you can't pick a favorite, just let me know what you think of the video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, check out Jackie's links, 